my name's Dan Bentley. This is this talk is just about a uh, fun wit. I love Scrabble, but I've always hated crosswords. And I realized recently it's because crossword clues like these from a Sunday New York Times are just boring trivia. Uh, crosswords, as Americans do them, actually kind of suck. Uh, you can see here are the problems with clues themselves. If you see something like Gunslinger Wyatt, it's always going to be ERP. That's the only possible clue for that word. And you see this other clue, is it remake or remade? The clue itself is ambiguous. I hate crosswords, but luckily there's a solution, cryptic crosswords. In cryptic crosswords, a cryptic clue has a surface meaning, so you can read this as a sentence, but in fact it has two parts. One, a definition, like a normal crossword, and second, wordplay that leads to the same answer. So let's take a look. We can separate the two with a bar, and the slides came out horribly, I apologize. You can see play could be drama in a normal crossword. Uh, doctor is DR, American Medical Association is AMA. You put them together and you get drama. The two pieces lead to the same answer. When you've solved a cryptic clue, you know you've solved it. Uh, they're hard to solve but easy to verify, or as computer scientists say, they're NP. Uh, there are a lot more tools that you can, that the, uh, clue writer has, again, sorry for the horrible arrows. Uh, in a double definition clue, the, t the two halves are both uh, normal crossword clues. So take notice can be Mark, gospel writer is Mark. Uh, you get the same answer. You have anagram. So here you can see that tangled indicates that you should tangle what comes after it. So reach up at, you tangle those layers, you get parachute. Skydiving apparatus is parachute. Uh, they lead to the same answer. Uh, here you can see again, uh, but poorly, apologies, you still have that why it leads to ERP, but it's that fact isn't enough. Instead, you have to use your brain not as a database, but as a problem solver, and that's fundamentally more fun. Um, here you can see re uh, returned indicates that you uh, have to reverse uh, the definition for beer, which is lager, and you get regal. Uh, you might ask, hey, why haven't I just told you all of the indicator words? I, I've told you a couple now. Uh, there isn't any official list. There are no rules. It's whatever the clue writer can use to convey to the audience that this is something you ought to do. Uh, I'm just going to let the clues go behind me. Uh, a homophone indicator, great. Um, here you can actually uh, physically have to modify the clue, and you can say that uh, beat... Uh, yeah, pound is beat, it contains S, you get to uh, beast, yeah. Um, here, <laughs> fundamentally, this isn't just semantical wordplay, this is a, a literal wordplay, so you can see that book rack has nothing to do with the vegetable you eat, but okra is in the letters of book rack. I'm really just trying to give you a sense now for when you reach one of these puzzles, what you have to do. You have to look for any handhold. Do I start looking for indicators and go bottom up, or do I try figuring out where to break the clue in half and, and go top down? It's really a uh, fascinating feeling. Here, this is an and lit clue. This breaks the rule. The same text is both definition and wordplay. So spoil vote can be veto, but spoil is an anagram indicator, meaning uh, rearrange the layers and vote to get veto. Uh, it's like writing a, a function in, in two different programming languages that does the same things. But what's really amazing is how these uh, crosswords get harder. I'm going to give you some examples. They actually add per-puzzle rules that you have to learn to apply. So in this clue, phases, it's like phases of the moon. And for uh, one quarter of each of the clues, you have to apply these different rules. Uh, so you might have to just, in full, answer it uh, normally. Here, you have to... Uh, for a quarter of them, you have to uh, anagram it. You can see here in spoonerisms, you have to do spoonerisms. So initially skip, S, jump, hop, that's shop. Y, bears, spoonerized is by wares, which is shop. And, and, and it all works out. The hardest one I've ever seen is this one, the hard rectangle. So first you solve everything. Then you shade, clue, uh, shade cells containing letters not in the title. Does anyone know what that looks like? A teammate of mine pointed out that it looks a little like a map of Venice. And if you highlight uh, that open space, the letters spell out the Grand Canal. You then have to go through a couple more poems, uh, a Shelley poem that is about Venice, and you have to get uh, a text to write on the top. Uh, cryptic crosswords are a lot of fun. They exercise your brain in ways that only your brain can do. This is a great starter book. You should give them a try, uh, and they will just get harder. You can never get good enough. <laughs>